Tonight, Google earned billions, but is that enough? Mt. Gox might liquidate, and a Heartbleed hacker is charged. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 67 for Wednesday, April 16th, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by NatureBox, where you can order great tasting, healthy snacks delivered right to your door. Forget the vending machine and get in shape with healthy, delicious treats like whole wheat figgy bars. You guys, they're good. To get 50% off your first box, go to naturebox.com slash twit. That's naturebox.com slash twit. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into the tech feed, shall we? Google reported its first quarter results of the year today with revenue of $15.42 billion and earnings per share of $6.27, which both missed analyst estimates, not by much, but the stock is trending down in after-hours trading, even though Google grew its revenue 19% year-over-year. Some other factors at play here. Two weeks ago, the company completed a stock split that doubled the number and halved the price of individual shares from around $1,060 to $530. Google also sold Motorola in the last four months, which was its most expensive acquisition to date, and then acquired Nest for $3.2 billion, also an expensive acquisition. Later in the show, we'll speak with VentureBeat's John Kutzier about more about what the 2014 horizon looks like for Google. But first, let's get into a little bit more of the news feed. Mt. Gox is becoming the poster child for how not to be a successful Bitcoin exchange. The company lost 850,000 Bitcoins, worth almost $500 million in a theft that apparently went undetected for years. We reported on that previously. Then the company filed for bankruptcy protection in Japan back in February then recovered 200,000 of those missing Bitcoins. Now the Wall Street Journal reports sources that say the company plans to liquidate its assets, which would then allow creditors to recover at least some remaining Bitcoins. Mt. Gox could, though, also find a buyer, though CEO Mark Karpeles will likely lose his post. A U.S. federal judge has asked him to appear in court tomorrow to answer questions about the exchange. But his lawyer says he will not travel to the U.S. because of possible detainment concerns. Probably good concerns. Well, Stephen Arturo Solis Reyes, you may not have heard of him. He's a 19-year-old man from London, Ontario, Canada. And he's been charged with unauthorized use of a computer and mischief in relation to data in connection with the loss of taxpayer information from the Canada Revenue, Ag Canada Revenue Agency website that was made possible, see how I'm getting around to it, by the Heartbleed privacy breach affecting websites worldwide. Solis Reyes is a computer science student at Western University, says a spokesman for the university. The Canada Revenue Agency shut down its website to the public last Friday in response to the Heartbleed vulnerability, which is caused by a flaw in OpenSSL software, which is commonly used on the internet to provide security and privacy. Now, by Monday, the agency said that 900 social insurance numbers had indeed been compromised. Yoon Khan Kil, a senior vice president of Samsung's product strategy team, tells Reuters that the company is working on two Tizen phones, a top-end and then an affordable version that's, that are both due out in June, and then a new Android-based smartwatch due for release later this year. Samsung's new watch will be its fifth. Previous releases include the Galaxy Gear, Gear 2, Gear 2 Neo with Tizen, plus the Gear Fit, fit with custom software, so... We'll see. Microsoft search engine Bing has added cards to its homepage, displaying news and weather and flights and stock information according to your interests that you put into your settings, a lot like Google's Google Now. Once set up, users will be notified across all Bing-powered services of status updates, including Cortana. Coming up, 10 houses built in one day with a 3D printer. What the what? And next, I'll chat with John Kutzier from VentureBeat. More about those earnings from Google and that new camera app. But first, let's talk about food, shall we? Eating right sounds like the easiest thing in the world until I hit my afternoon slump. Usually happens around 3 p.m. And then I just grab whatever. Does that sound familiar? If so, head over to naturebox.com slash twit for a much better way to snack. I am addicted to these treats. They're not even bad for me. What you do is click on the continue button once you're there and then you choose between three subscription options. Then you just go ahead and place your order. Because you're a member, 
you can select which snacks you want in your monthly box. Nice monthly box like this. Well, I've sort of started to eat into it, but it comes nice and packaged well. Vegan, soy-free, gluten-conscious. If you don't like lactose, nut-free, non-GMO, all choices for you so you can get the kind of box that you want with the treats that you like. You can also choose savory or sweet or spicy. Nature Box sends great tasting snacks right to your door. Free shipping anywhere in the U.S., Healthy, satisfying snacks, French toast granola, chili lime pistachios. It's got pretty fun to choose. Over 100 of them. All with zero trans fats, zero high fructose corn syrup. It's just bad for you, trust me. Nothing artificial. Nature Box is the snack happy gift that keeps on giving. You can do a three, a six, or a 12 month subscription for yourself, a family, or friend, or even the whole office. Forget the vending machine and get in shape with healthy, delicious treats. Remember, to get 50% off your first box, go to naturebox.com slash twit. Stay full, stay strong, naturebox.com slash twit. And thanks to Nature Box for keeping me full and supporting Tech News tonight. All right, joining us now is John Coots here, VP of Product over at VentureBeat. Hey, John. Hey, how are you? I'm good. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. So let's talk about those Google earnings. Yeah, they missed the street, but they seem pretty healthy, don't they? Seem pretty healthy. I mean, I'd like to have $15 billion in revenue. Uh, I'm sure you would too. Mm -hmm. um, their cost per click is down a little bit though. Um, and that is a little bit concerning. Um, not hugely concerning because you can make it up on volume. Um, still, that is a bit of a concern. To me, the bigger concern is where their core business is going. Um, if you look at search revenue last year, it grew at about 8%. Um, well, mobile ad revenue, uh, grew at about 110%. And guess what? In mobile, Google is not the juggernaut that it is uh, on the desktop. So Google has a bit of a problem there. It's a little bit funny uh, because Google has five of the top six apps in the world, pretty much. They own you know, the platform that makes up 80% of what we use uh, in terms of smartphones. Um, and yet they're not monetizing super well there. All right. Well, if Google's revenues are still mostly around advertising, um, digital sales for apps and media. What's interesting is Google's Play Store is now larger than iOS in terms of quarterly downloads. App Annie, uh, who does a lot of research, shows that uh, in the mobile world, Google is closing that gap on revenue that Apple has always enjoyed as well if you compare iOS to Google Play. So when, when you hear about the work that Google is obviously putting into smartwatches, you've got modular phones, the Project Aura. Does it, does it make sense to go hardware when clearly they're, they're, they're doing pretty well in that, in that software space? It makes sense if you're Google and you're throwing off tons of spare cash to go for all kinds of moonshots and do interesting things and see what happens. The Nest acquisition, Google Glass, those sorts of things will open up new avenues for them, new avenues for monetization, new avenues for um, capturing interest and pot potentially ad revenue as well. So yeah, I don't have any problem with Google doing those things. I know some analysts do. I don't have any problem with it. They have the cash to do it. The question is, are they keeping enough focus on their core business as they're doing all these moonshots. All right, let's talk about the the new camera app from Google. A lot of people are talking about it. This is, uh, what's new? What's new here? Significantly awesome. You're able to change the depth of field um, after the fact and while you're taking a photo, which is awesome. What it does essentially is it makes your uh, smartphone shots look like they're taken with an SLR, where you can actually have the focus on the foreground or let's say a flower or a face, and you can blur the background. It's an artistic effect that photographers use to make their, their photographs look much more awesome than the rest of us. And now you can do it too. Okay, let's move on now to Google Glasses. One day sale. Sounds like it was a pretty big success. They're not sharing numbers though, are they? <laughs> it sounds like it was a great success, and we don't know, do we? Um, sure, there were enough people lining up to buy a $1,500 wearable technology uh, that the white one sold out. We know that the white one sold out. We don't know anything else. We don't know the numbers of the sales. Um, it's cool. It's exciting. Is it worth $1,500? Tell you what, I didn't buy one. Well, I didn't either, but then again, I don't have enough people around me wearing them, so maybe I don't have that, you know, FOMO that is associated with having the great thing that everyone else has. Do you think Google's going to do this again? 
No, I think that the next time that they release it, they'll actually release it as a consumer product. It'd be available for $300, $400, maybe a little bit cheaper, something like that. They'll have worked out more bugs, they'll have better battery life, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I think then it will be quite successful. I mean, if, if you could just if you could just uh, look into your crystal ball, what do you what do you think is going to be Google's big win in 2014? Is that even possible to 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 bring it down to to one thing? Oh, the driving car is coming next month. I know it. Oh, excellent. Oh, good. <laughs> I hate driving. Oh, that's awesome. Such good news. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thanks for shedding some light on the future, John. John Coutier, VP of Product at VentureBeat. Uh, where can folks uh, read more of what you're doing over at VentureBeat and and get a hold of you online? VentureBeat.com is the best place. All right. Well, thanks so much for being here. Thank you as well. All right. Let's finish off with a pretty cool company, Chinese company called the Winsun Decoration Design Engineering Corporation. They've 3D printed 10 houses in 24 hours in Shanghai's Huangpu district using recycled construction materials. Well, the walls anyway, their buildings' roofs weren't printed because of technology limitations. But still, the printer used to build the houses is 500 feet long. It's 33 feet wide. It's 20 feet high. And the buildings will be offices at a high-tech industrial park in Shanghai, says CEO Ma Yin. He also says he hopes this process will be used to build skyscrapers in the future. I hope that they are structurally very sound. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. If you know somebody who likes news, let them know about it as well. You can write us at TN2 at twit.tv. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today. It's our little sister program. Not really very little. Tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.